You're watching Total Sports Xterra TV, presented by Rehydrate Sport. Uh, it's the 2nd of January and uh, serious training has officially started and uh, we're here in Stellenbosch, um, our base camp for South African summer. The coffee shop is part of, uh, part of training. Uh, being sponsored usually means you get the, the new stuff before anyone else gets it. Um, prototype material that sometimes you test that other people either get the next year or maybe never even gets. There's definitely some, some great perks to getting sponsored. Before I was sponsored, I used to patch tubes until my tubes looked like a leopard skin. Um, and now, when I have a flat tire, I just throw the tube in the bin and put new tubes in. And um, being able to ride the newest equipment all the time is really nice. Unfortunately, I just lost my Avia, which is my running shoe sponsor in the States. Um, the company closed down, um, so they won't, they won't be manufacturing Avia shoes anymore. And I got the news just a couple of days before Christmas, which um, is pretty bad timing for, um, in terms of finding new, new shoe sponsorships. So at the moment, we're looking around and trying to find a new brand that I can set up with for the next number of years. I enjoy working on my skills. For me, it's probably the most fun part of training. And it's challenging and it's fun and it's, it's out there in nature. So um, whenever I have a chance, um, I come out here and do some technical riding. Um, most of my training is on the road and it's very specific. Um, it's certain workouts that Ian gives me and it's according to watts and certain intervals. And it gets quite uh, painful and tedious with time. So coming out here to me is like the, the holiday from training. And it, the part I enjoy the most. I'm riding on this uh, rocky piece of uh, little hill here and you, you, even though you go very very slowly, a lot slower than you ever go in a race, it teaches you basically all the skills you need um, that you, when you're in your mountain bike. Um, yeah. Balance is very important, the slower you go the harder it is to balance. It teaches you to use the front and the rear brake properly so you don't um, topple over or wash out and it teaches you to move your body as you um, go over the rocks, you, you basically throw the bike over or you have to balance and you have to read lines while the terrain is difficult, you have to look up and you have to pick away because there's no real way back there. Um, so the slow training is, is very underrated, I think very few people, especially people new to the sport, they go, oh, I need to go fast right away <laughs> without having skills, so um, going slowly is the best way of, of learning the basic skills and then you, once you have that you can go faster and faster and, and use the balance and the good braking and reading the terrain um, on faster pieces of single track or cheap trails. And I think being happy is, is key. And uh, if you're a happy athlete, it's a fast athlete. So uh, we really enjoy everything we do. Even even the not so fun parts around the, the traveling and, and the more difficult parts of it. There's the two of us, we can always make fun, make fun about it or joke or, um, yeah, we enjoy it a lot more. Conrad is one of the best off-road cyclists in the game, and though he makes it look easy, believe me, it's not. It takes years of hard work and practice, and nerves of steel. Traveling at these speeds across rocky, uneven ground, with trees hurtling past you, is very dangerous, even for professionals. Just ask Conrad. If you lose concentration, things do go downhill very quickly. An injury can be a very real risk to one's career. Coming to Stellenbosch for training since '97, um, and back then it was a small, very quiet town, and it's grown a lot since then. It's become very busy, lots of traffic and a lot of people, but it's still, I would say, probably the best place to train in South Africa. 
So my coach Ian will um, email or basically put programs into Training Peaks, um, and he'll give me a description. Um, like this day, which was in September, it was uh, back to the quality, lo nice long warm up, um, 25 minutes at 250 watts. Then 10 by 6 minutes at 420 watt climbs at 80 RPM, standing 30 seconds every si at 60 RPM with 4 minutes recovery. So it's very, very specific. If I feel good, I'm allowed to push a little bit more, and if I'm not feeling good, then he'll tell me to back off. Um, like it says here at the very bottom, do the first two reps at 400, then the next one's at 420, then back down to 400 if 420 feels like it's not sustainable. So then I'll go out and I'll train and I'll record everything on my power meter and then um, after the training I'll plug it into training peaks again and it'll download the graph and all the repeats and the intervals and the average watts which is the big thing we look at. And then I, it's very important that I've, I tell him what I felt like so I would say something like the legs felt good during the warm up, the first two reps at 400 watts was quite easy, that the rest at 420 felt good and watched wanted to push more number four and five but then the legs started tiring and I had to fast bait to hold 420. It's not like I get a three week program in advance, it's literally going from, from one day to the next which is very specialized training and it's work, been working really well for me and I'm very lucky to, to have a coach that's, that's so hands on and so really in tune with what I do every day. Well, technology is, is so advanced nowadays that you can really use it to, to train scientifically and I think it's really just the last few years been groundbreaking as, as, as the actual science um, that you can use in training and I think that's another reason why as an older athlete I'm still able to, to race at the very, very top is because with science we, we found that I don't have to train as much as we did before because I'm only doing the sessions that I really need to do. You know, with my Sinto Ambit which has GPS I can take it mountain biking or running and it'll um, record of course the heart rates and the speeds and the distance and the time and intervals and the number of meters gained and the temperature and and all of those things and my coach can see what kind of a stress it was and how successful I was at, at executing the training. Most of my training is probably 70 or 70% yeah, of my training is probably um, very low intensity and low heart rate. I can spend time, hours riding at 110 heart rate or and it can be actually a, a fairly decent pace. So. Um, low intensity training is definitely beneficial. I do a lot of my training on the road bike because you can really control the effort. Whereas mountain biking, if you're going downhill or if you're in the trees or in the rocks or, or something like that, you can't really control your, your effort. And if you're just riding for fun or training for fun or racing for fun, then that's one thing, but I'm racing for performance. So um, the training needs to be very specific to, to what Ian gives me. And um, that, that's why I need a road bike. And I'll have this road bike set up exactly as my mountain bike. So the saddle position, the fore and off position, and the saddle height is exactly the same as my mountain bike. And also the handlebars over here is exactly the, the same distance as it would be on my mountain bike. So um, my body thinks it's a mountain bike, but I'm on the road and I can train at a very consistent and a very controlled environment. Next, it's off to a tranquil dam to do a few kilometers of swimming on one of the warmest days of summer. Yeah, a typical day for Team Stills um, is we usually sleep till we wake up. We don't set alarms if we have, unless we really have to. We'll have strong coffee, we'll make some good coffee. If I have a very serious training day, then I'll be very focused and I'll make sure that my training, my serious training happens first. And um, I'll make sure to have enough carbs and have enough fluids before, before I go out. When Diesel comes with, whether it's cycling or running, we'll probably warm up together and then I'll head off and, and start doing quality or doing my thing on the side. Depends where we are and what bike she has with us. <laughs> Nowadays I've been doing a lot of longer training. So I'll go through lunch and eat my calories on the bike. We like living life a little bit slower, so we may go wine tasting on a wine farm or we may catch up with friends or meet at a coffee shop or go see places we like the outdoors. Um, so it really depends where we are, what we'll do, but we, we definitely appreciate um, the, just the basic things in life that people often take for granted. And I think being so privileged that I can basically train whenever I want to and I'm at the office all the time or never, whichever way you see it. Um, we're lucky enough to, to be able to really live, us, live ourselves into our environment.
I'm doing something a bit different this year. Um, it's a new challenge and I used to make fun at the long distance guys, the Ironman guys. I used to say, why would you train all day long? And we, we used to have a, we probably still have a saying, if you can't go fast, you go long. So we used to poke fun at the long distance guys. Yeah, so opportunity came up for, for me to race in Abu Dhabi. Um, it's on the 3rd of March and it's a 3K swim and a 200K road bike and a 20K run. It's got some serious prize money and it's been won by very prestigious athletes before. It's gonna motivate me to swim more because those are all fast swimmers and 3K is a long way, you can lose a lot of time. Um, but also the 200 kilometer bike ride. I mean, obviously cycling is my forte and um, if I can optimize my power and minimize my wind resistance, then it'd be interesting to see what, what kind of a gap I can get off the bike and if I can hold it off on the run. And I think it's, it's a fun challenge. Well, he's our SA champion from 2012 and third finisher at the World Champs. Keep watching Total Sports Exterior TV to see how he does this year.